you bow down to them, you serve them. Like that is what a narcissist ultimately wants in a relationship. Now, are they gonna say that? No, like I'm not gonna come out and be like, I really want you to worship me. But when you find that person, that at least for a period of time is like worshiping you, you're like, man, I feel really good, okay? That's the piece that a lot of times narcissists like try to hide of like, that's not who I am, but that's also what I want at the same time. Have you ever wondered if someone in your life has narcissistic personality disorder? Maybe you're struggling to understand the behavior of a narcissist, how it actually works, how it functions, like what's actually going on. Is this person narcissistic or are they not? And do you want to actually learn like some of the symptoms of what narcissistic personality disorder looks like, how it actually happens? Now, you might be wondering who I am. My name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, change, and development to let people know the toxic toxicity of narcissistic abuse, how it destroys relationships, families, coworkers, job environments, everything, and how it can be so awful to you. And until you actually realize what it is, a lot of times you stay stuck in a relationship that is really sucking the life out of you over and over. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your, your guide in the 45-day Clarity Challenge, you can access at claritychallenge.net. So check it out there. When we talk about this aspect of narcissist, narcissistic personality disorder, like I want to be able to discuss something of what it is and how it actually affects uh, that person's ability to be able to have healthy relationships. So we're going to go through some of the points to hopefully give you an idea of what it looks like and piece together of like, wait a second, I'm seeing this in my partner. Like this is my boyfriend right now. Like this is my fiance. This is what I'm going through right now. If that's you, you're gonna go to escapetoxicity.com to start your journey of healing so you can get free. It's a seven day challenge for $7 to go through and understand narcissistic personality disorder, how you contribute with reactive abuse, like what's going on there, how to be able to break free from it, how to be able to break free of the trauma bond, things like that, okay? Escapetoxicity.com. So anyways, diving in, I wanna be able to talk through a couple things. First off is grandiosity. Okay, you're going to see this period of there being a sense of superiority over you. And with this, this person is always better than you, always better than anybody else. Sometimes the best person in all of their jobs, but like he keeps getting fired from his job because the boss is an idiot. Every single time you're like, hmm, boss has been an idiot for like five of your previous jobs. Maybe there's something here. Nah, it can't be me, gotta be someone else, like all this kind of stuff. So a sense of superiority in what's actually happening. And a lot of times this comes out in exaggeration. Now, with exaggeration, a narcissist a lot of times will exaggerate their own self-importance and their own achievements of like, I look better because I've done all these things. And then you're like, you actually haven't done all these things. You haven't shown up in this way. You haven't taken care of me in this way. You haven't shown up in business this way. All these different things. Like you'll see this exaggerated, like I'm the best thing ever. And you're like, no, I don't, I don't see that. Okay. But this is grandiosity piece that like pushes it higher and higher, making you be at first be like, wow, this person's amazing. And then you start to realize all the pieces don't add up. So grandiosity is like a big one. Uh, think about it this way. Like they might constantly try to brag about their accomplishments. Okay. So I wouldn't necessarily try to brag about like, oh, I'm so amazing, but I try to put like these subtle things in to make sure people knew that I was amazing and to show up in certain ways. So they would treat me as I'm amazing. Okay. So like trying to put it around, sometimes going to the place of belittling other people, like, let me do like these small jabs, these small things to put you back in line, kind of put you down and then make me feel better about myself. And then other people are like, oh yeah, he is so amazing. This person's not all this kind of stuff. Okay. So back and forth. Now, another one that I want to bring up that is like popular when we talk about narcissistic personality disorder is empathy, or we don't really talk about it because there's no empathy, right? So a lot of times we talk about how narcissists lacks empathy or big thing you'll hear is this idea of being incapable of empathy of how they don't they don't care about other people, they're not interested in other people, they don't care about anything going on with your emotions, with your feelings, anything like that, okay? While that's true, I need you to understand two pieces of it, okay? The first piece is that narcissists oftentimes have some level of at least cognitive empathy, okay? And with cognitive empathy, it helps because then they can at least understand, especially early on in the relationship, how they need to respond to mirror or to appear in the relationship so that they can get you, so they can look better than whatever's going on, okay? So a lot of times narcissists will have at least cognitive empathy. There's other times where there'll be this piece that they know what they should do. This other piece of like, they feel the empathy just slightly, okay? But they feel the empathy and they know I need to do something. So how I normally illustrate is like, say I do something and I piss off my wife. Like I do something that hurts her. She's sitting on the couch, she's frustrated, she's sad, she's hurt, she's crying, okay? In that moment, I'm standing all the way across the other room, I look over at her and I know in my mind, I need to go over, need to give her a hug, 
need to tell her I'm sorry, I need to apologize, I need to have changed behavior, all this kind of stuff. Like I know this stuff, okay? Logically, I know this stuff. Even in the moment, I know this stuff. But the problem is if I walk over there and I give her a hug and I apologize, I have to admit my own actions, okay? Don't wanna do that because it's not my fault. I have to agree that it's my fault or at least acknowledge that the reason why she's crying is because of me, which brings out guilt if I did something bad and brings about shame is I am bad and then I have to avoid that. I have to run away from it. So as a narcissist seeing that and being like, hmm, this is how logically I should do it, nope, would rather not do that. Would rather walk out, would rather scream, rage, anything like that to avoid having the shame, having the guilt that what I'm actually seeing, what I'm experiencing is something that I cause because that is incongruent with the mask that I've created that I'm a good person, okay? So there's a lot of different nuances, but hopefully that makes sense as far as the empathy piece of understanding what's going on there. Um, a lot of times you're gonna see in, in a regular sense, like a narcissist that's gonna disregard like your feelings, your emotions, and only focus on them. Like your feelings don't matter. Like it's about me. And you're going to notice like, wait a second, like I just was crying to you and now you're all upset about this and I'm supposed to comfort you. Like what is going on? And they'll use people for their own gain without concern of like how it's actually affecting you. And today it doesn't matter how it's affecting you. Like you need, if you could understand this to start off with, this is the only thing you get out of this video. Narciss doesn't care about you. They care about their mass. They care about their image. They care about their money. They care about everything else but you. Okay. And a lot of times their needs matter way more than anything else. Which leads me into another point, which is need for admiration. Like a strong desire, a lot of times it's described as like a strong desire of praise, attention, validation. I, I like to take it to another level of like almost like adoration or worship. Uh, a narcissist ultimately would love for you to just worship them. Like just treat them as a god. And like they are the best thing ever. You bow down to them. You serve them. Like that is what a narcissist ultimately wants in a relationship. Now, are they going to say that? No. Like I'm not going to come out and be like, I really want you to worship me. But when you find that person that at least for a period of time is like worshiping you, you're like, man, I feel really good. Okay. That's the piece that a lot of times narcissists like try to hide of like, that's not who I am, but that's also what I want at the same time. Okay. This need for admiration, like looking for someone to like prove their worth, looking to prove their value. Uh, sometimes like leading them to like fish for compliments, like looking for attention, looking for approval, looking for something to be able to make them feel better. Okay. Sometimes you'll see it just on the flip side, like them being angry when they feel like you weren't actually paying attention to them or they, like, you're not giving them what they deserve, going back to entitlement, like what they actually want in that moment, okay? Then you have this aspect of entitlement, okay? Like they're special, they're entitled to certain privileges, certain things, to you, to your body, to your money, like every single thing. And like they deserve specialness, they deserve special treatment, and whatever they want is what you're supposed to give them, okay? You're gonna see this a lot of times in the relationship. You see this a lot of times with coercion, with marital rape, with them being in the relationship and not caring about anything about you, just caring about their own needs in the moment, okay? Uh, sometimes you'll see sense of entitlement. Uh, we've kind of touched on that before with a couple of things. Uh, explo exploitative behavior. Uh, one I wanted to highlight really quick before we ran out of time is this concept of hypersensitivity. Uh, a lot of times you'll see a narcissist that is very, very sensitive to criticism or perceived criticism. So let me ask you, did you have a time in the relationship where you're like, hey, this is bothering me, and all of a sudden the other person is like lashing back out at you? Like they're taking it out on you of like, he's like, I can't believe you brought this up. Like, why would you even treat me this way? Like, I can't believe you even accused me of this. Like all this thing, and you're like, I just asked like what you did, or I just asked like a, like a small thing. You'll see something so small and so tiny, all of a sudden turn up into this giant, giant argument and this blow up. Because at that point, they're viewing you as attacking them. Now, you might be like, was well, there anything I could do to not look like attacking them? Not really, okay? Because at the end of the day, they're still gonna twist it around to be about them. Like, it's extremely hard to be able to tiptoe around a narcissist's like shame triggers and be like, let me tell you this without causing you shame. It's because their inability to actually be honest with themselves, to be honest with you, to be honest with everybody else of like, hey, this is what I'm feeling. Now let's process it. Now let's work through it. Instead, you bring up just one tiny little thing, all hell breaks loose. Okay, so this happens a lot of times. Like you might have where they strongly react to like you just trying to give them a piece of advice or you just trying to give them like feedback or like interact or develop some type of boundaries in the relationship of like, hey, I'm not comfortable with this. And all of a sudden lashes back out. And there's so many different times that it happens. A narcissist oftentimes will view any type of criticism as you attacking them as you betraying them as you like coming back and just like trying to obliterate them. Like they'll switch it around. That way they're the victim 
and that way they are have the full justifiability to be able to attack you. Okay, so we see this time and time and time again. As you're going through this, did you resonate with any of this? Did you see some of these things that like, wait, some of these are like symptoms that people see and they just don't connect them to narcissism. At the end of the day, if you're with someone that has a lot of these symptoms or has a lot of these traits, or maybe you watched one of the other videos that talks about the nine dark diagnostic traits, like all these different things. If you have someone like this and you're like, I don't know if they're a narcissist though, like I'm not sure. I wanna tell you something really key that if you can understand this, it will help change your life. End of the day, it doesn't matter. All that matters is how is this person actually demonstrating their love for you, demonstrating their care for you. Well, he said, no, nope, demonstrating. Well, he, he no, nope, demonstrating. Well, he, he, he came home and, and played with the kids for five minutes. How is he demonstrating that to you by cheating on you, by lying to you? Like, like we have to be able to put the word demonstrate in front of things. Otherwise, you get so confused that you stay with a person that's being really, really toxic to you over and over again, and you think that it's worth it, or you think that's good enough, or that you think that's all that you're worth. It's not. You're worth so much more. But you have to be able to break free. And go to escapetoxicity.com today for our seven-day course. It's for $7 to be able to help you understand narcissism, help you understand how to break free, help you understand the guilt that you feel by being in the relationship, by leaving him, all these different things. And you're like, I don't know what to do. We provide a step-by-step process to help guide you from like this side of the equation of like, I know how his mind thinks. I know what I've done. I know what I've been through. I know the things that I've caused. And then trying to help you actually see this is how you walk it back. This is how you reclaim you. This is how you become the version of you that you've been looking for that's been hidden and sedated for such a long period of time because of the toxic person and how he treated you. If you're interested in an accelerated process where you work one-on-one with me directly, you can go to rawmotivations.com. Would love to be able to interact with you there. Otherwise, if you're like, hey, I'm not sure about this guy, what should I actually do? Check out escapetoxicity.com. Read through it, click through it, uh, click through the first page. The second page will actually show you like a breakdown when you scroll down of like the individual things that is actually there. That way you can get an idea of what's actually happening and how to be able to heal, grow, change, and develop to become the person that you're called to be.